Come up higher. Come up higher. It's the sound. It's the sound of a trumpet blast. And it's saying, come up higher. Now the Lord showed me something. Generally when we get together here, uh, now Norris is part of the boy band. I always say it's Neil, me, and Tracy. We could start a boy band. Basically, we're overwhelmed uh, with, with ladies. And I want to tell you something. I'm comfortable with that. You know why I'm comfortable with that? Because... I, many of you know, that's all I've had in my life, are ladies. If you look at me, don't know, we're not trying to prophesy anybody into anything or out of anything. Thank you. i got to be careful here. I remember in Germany, I came, this is a God's honest truth. Uh, six years ago in Germany, I believe Jenny set those meetings up for me, I think. Six years ago in Germany. I come into this church, it was all Russian. I don't mean they were in a hurry rushing around, they were Russian. But it was in Germany. Only I could minister in Germany in a Russian church. Ready for this? Oh my God. And they were Jews. Oh. Wow. It was Russian Jews in Germany. Wow. It's pretty awesome. The first the first time I ever preached there, the thing that overwhelmed me is I couldn't believe how many couples there were in this church. And they were all younger because a lot of the believers over there, Europe's kind of younger on the believer side. And so this is a young church. They were all young adults. And I'll tell you, they just, all these young adults, newly married, running around, no kids. It felt so weird to me. It was a church full of all these good looking people, no kids. And after the third night, I wanted to go home. Not because there were no kids, but because I was missing my family. I had already been in Africa. And I was kind of having a, a conversation with the Lord like you do when you've been traveling a whole lot. And that conversation sounds like, well, will the people here get mad if I cut my speaking engagement off by two days so I can fly back to the U.S.? Because I was ready to see my wife. I had been gone for almost a month. And I was complaining to the Lord. I know y'all don't ever do that. Y'all never complain to the Lord, ever. I need a hotline and just say, we need to make that hotline. And nobody ever answers it. It's just a voicemail. Instead of complaining to the Lord hotline. Leave your complaint at the beat. And it can be all y'all. And y'all can just complain to that. Me too. And at the end of the year, we'll review them just to see how funny they are. God, are you listening to this? How many ever complained to the Lord? So I was complaining to the Lord and I was saying, I want to get... See, I feel liberty. I feel the spirit of liberty in here. I feel a lot of prophetic juice on today. But I feel liberty. I feel liberty because some of you ladies are going to get lit up. So, I'm complaining to the Lord and I'm thinking... I want to fly home. I want to fly home. And that whole night, I got there, and it was, I mean, it was, it was full. Nothing but... Now, at this point, I just knew they were Russians, and I was in Germany. And I'm laying on my back, and I'm praying, and I'm just praying that the night will go fast. Because I want to go home. That's it. I have made up my mind. I literally said, I don't have anything to give to these people tonight. I'm worn out. Because I just come from Africa. They force you to pray for everybody. And then I, here I am in Germany in this Russian church. And all they want to do is not force me to pray for everybody. After I pray for every single person, then they want to argue with me about Bible translations. Which ones are the best? I don't have the patience for that. You know what I say? The Bible that you read, just go with that. That'll be a change for a lot of people. Just say the Bible that you read. Because some people go, well, King James, if it was good enough for Jesus, it was good enough for me. Jesus never had the King James Bible. That was hundreds of years after Jesus. I can preach on Bibles and translations all day long. But I'm not Francis Swagger. But anyway, uh, I just was ready to go home. And I'm laying there complaining to the Lord. And then I heard the voice of the Holy Ghost say, David, 
You do not have the option to mail it in tonight. You sit up, get up, go wash your face, and you come in here and you pray for every person in this room. And you do what I anointed you to do tonight. Wow. And don't you complain. Ooh, and I said, Lord, I believe there's been some trouble on this phone call. This is for somebody else. This call was meant for Gina and you called me, Lord. He said, no more complaining. You get up and you prophesy. And I got up and I started prophesying. I got about five people in. And they had started. Now this is in Europe. And they had started. There was a line out the back. And I started praying for people. And people are starting. I'm starting to see some really wild stuff happen. I'm starting to see people flip. <laughs> in church. I'm starting to see people um, almost floating. Literally. You ever been in a meeting where people are floating? Some of y'all ate so much we might float around. <laughs> Not that. Don't even talk about me. I know I can float, okay? Just stop. That's from the heart medication. Anyway, that's what I said. Eat a whole cake and blame it on the medication. Well, I ain't on the medication. I'm just laying there and I said, God, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to give me something. He and he gave me just like this infusing of power. People started flipping, people were flipping, rolling, screaming. The fire of God was hitting people. There was this one guy and he looked like the most, to be honest, he looked like the biggest nerd in the whole thing. Can I say that word? He looked like a nerd. And he looked like he needed to be, he needed something. He you could just tell, he just looked like a really angry nerd. And he was standing at the back and everybody's coming through and I thought, this guy needs a joy, but I'm not gonna force anything. And I said, Lord, you're real. If you can get that guy, you can get anybody. How many of you have been there before? Yes. Some of you are there tonight. <laughs> this guy comes up to me. He gets about he gets about three foot from me, and I just I said receive the anointing. I think I even said it in German because I like to learn their words. So however you say that, I said, "Unstunchenheimer" or whatever, and he goes flying backward. I mean flying backward. They couldn't even catch him. When they did get him up off the floor, he, he literally almost was levitating on the floor. I'm not kidding you. And he laid there and I thought, my God. When this guy got up off the floor, I found out he was the one of the main pastors in that city. And he had come in total burnout. He said, if I don't experience the Lord tonight, I'm going to give up everything. I'm going to turn and walk away from everything. My ministry, my family. And he said, the minute you, he said, I was so depressed. I was ready to give up on anything, everything. And he says, the minute you kind of did your hand like that and said, receive. The minute you did that, he said, I was, I heard the sound of a trumpet blast. And he said, the next thing you know, I was experiencing the power of the Holy Ghost in a way I've never experienced it before. And he began to weep and he began to talk about how God healed him of burnout. How many know God will, when that trumpet blast comes, burnout will get healed? Can you say hallelujah? Depression will go. He even, God healed his marriage. That night, God healed his marriage. He and his wife were completely impacted in this unbelievable way. Unbelievable. I heard as I was playing. I continue or pray all night long. I continued to hear short trumpet blasts to the point I thought this could be the rapture. I better jump to see. But I was hearing them regularly. You've heard shofar blasts, but I'm not talking about a shofar blast. I'm talking about the sound of a razor sounding razor loud trumpet. Have you ever been? next to a trumpet when somebody really blows it. Yes. It's different than a shofar. Yes. Shofar is good, but I got to tell you, some people blow that shofar, I, you're more worried about them being able to make it through than you are the sound. Have you ever seen people want to blow a shofar like that? And you just say, brother, I think you are not in shape with your COPD to be blowing it. You're going to have to revive the person blowing it. Or when they finally do get a big good blow going, it sounds like a 
elk dying looking for help. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the sound of a trumpet blast. When you hear that blast, have you ever been when somebody blasts a trumpet and the soldiers stand at attention? It's something that causes everybody to take notice. It's a trumpet blast. It's not only alarming to you and gets you to stand up straight. You need to hear this, but it's a trumpet blast. And it puts all your enemies on alert. And it says, not today, Satan, not this week, demons in hell. There's a trumpet blast. And that trumpet blast is reverberating. Everything in my life is affected because of that trumpet blast. That table is being prepared before me in the presence of my enemies because of that trumpet blast. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. It's because of that trumpet blast your marriage isn't going to look what it looked like. It's because of that trumpet blast your children that are acting crazy. That trumpet blast puts them on notice. It says heaven's about to come crashing into you. It's like going to the railroad tracks, only it's not a train that's going to run people over, but it's the glory of God in the kingdom of God when that trumpet blasts. The kingdom of God comes crashing into your present. The kingdom of God comes crashing into your past, and the kingdom of God sets you on a course for your future. That's the trumpet blast. Somebody say hallelujah. That's the trumpet blast. It's nothing any man can do. It has to come from the Spirit of the Lord. It's the Spirit of the Lord. When I look at somebody and say, that's going to happen. And it happens. I can't take credit for it. I got a friend here in town. And he's busy. And I love him. And he comes as he can. When he can. And he'll always be my friend. And he was having trouble with his business. He couldn't get anybody that wanted to work. And they couldn't make money. And he come to a meeting, a revival meeting at Church Point, and I saw the Lord bless this business, and I had a word of wisdom for him. And I said, you also need to fire the crew that's with you now, because they're ripping you off. I said, but if you hire these guys, you're gonna, there's going to come something, you're going to start flourishing like you've never flourished before. And I watched that man's business. I watched God give that man more business than you can imagine. Amen. To the point he didn't even know what. I'm telling you. To the point. Y'all need to hear this. To the point that he was literally going, Boy, I've never been here before. I need to know what to do. Because I, there's financial, I'm being financially blessed in a way. I'm standing before the Lord and I'm saying, I know the Lord did it. And you know what he did? He said he started looking for ways to give more than he'd ever give before. And every time he'd ever give, he'd say, you know what? I'd say, what can I pray for you about? He'd say that I could give even more because I feel guilty. He said, because I feel like I've got some sort of secret not everybody else has. And it's only because he understood the blessing of the Lord as it's on his finances. But i got something to tell you. It's more than just finances. It's a trumpet blast that sets everything in motion. Can you say hallelujah? It's a trumpet blast that goes into your inheritances. And even money you didn't even know was available to you. People start calling you and going, hey, we cut, they divided this money up. And you know what? Your name was there. And you know what? There's $10,000 attached to it. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. I'll take 10. I'll take 20. I'll take 30. Some of you are like, I'll just take some free food if you just... I want blessing. Amen. See, we think it's one thing or we think it's another. And I'm here to tell you that's wrong teaching. We're always taught that Jesus healed those that were infirm in their bodies. That He healed them all. Yeah, but what did that healing look like? That's what I want to get you to think about. What did that healing look like? If they were, if they were dealing with a sinus infection, I believe Jesus would have... Healed them of the sinus infection. But I also believe the minute he laid hands on them, if they were deaf, partially deaf in this ear, that when he laid hands on them, he makes all things new. So everything in that person's life, the minute Jesus laid hands on them and released the anointing, everything was brought back to a place where there's a reset button and everything was back as it should have been. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Yes, That's that. the anointing I'm talking about. Yes, I want that. Lord. Somebody goes, where are we going to get that? Right here, because I'm going to give it to you through Revelation. You get that, you know how to throw that switch. Somebody say, yeah. Yeah. It, it'll change things. 
Amen. It's a switch that you change, you turn. It's a switch, yeah. He healed them all. But the thing is, just one touch. If I could just touch the hem of His garment. Amen. If I could just get with Him for a second. If He can release that anointing, then all things will be brought to as if they had never suffered one day of aging whatsoever. It's the new you. This is what the Lord told me. He says, what I see for my daughters and my sons is that they will step forward as if they have never aged one day. They've never aged one day. I said, Lord, what does that look like? He said, well, it's easy, David. It's everything being restored that the locust ate. Everything being restored that the canker worm ate. Everything that the palmer worm tried to devour. Everything that the parasites tried to take from you. This is the year where you're going to, come on, you're going to eat the fat. And you're going to drink the sweet. And you're going to divide up portions because you're going to have more than you've ever had before. And you're going to have to look for people to bless. Can you say it? No more barren. No more borrowing. No more borrowing. I'm telling you right now, I'm standing more full of faith today. More full of faith today. After a year, off the, over a year off the mission field. More full of faith today. Yes, amen. Dr. Yes. said, David, you can go back on the mission field if you want to. I said, well, it's been almost kind of killing me that I can't. Because I've gone through months where I, I was supposed to go to India. I probably, that's when I had that heart attack. I probably wouldn't have made it back from India. How many know God has our timing? His timing. But I said, Lord, I want the sound of a trumpet blast. And I want it to be so loud that not only do I get what the enemy's trying to take from me, not only do I get what God's saving up for me, not only do I get it future tense, but everything that was stolen from me becomes backside interest. <laughs> I've never even seen it that way in the spirit. How many have ever been stolen from by the enemy? Just raise your hand. Imagine this. I'm teaching you something in the spirit today. It's only stolen if that's the way you want to see it. If you reappropriate it and say, no, I'm sowing that into my backside interest. You thought you stole that from me. But He's going to bless me. And when I get on the other side, everything you thought you stole from me was in an interest and was accumulating. And He's blessing me on the back side. I've literally catapulted that which got stolen. And I went ahead and sowed it because I know I'm going to get blessed on this side. And I want to have compound interest. Can you say hallelujah? That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about things that you thought were taken from you. That the enemy has never even had any access to whatsoever. You thought you lost it to the enemy, some of you. And the Lord said, no, when you started to go through that season, I protected it. And I hid it in the heavenly account. And I'll release it when it's time. But nothing has, no harm has come upon you. There are some that you thought maybe you lost it for good. And you thought, well, that was for another time and another place. And I'm telling you, you're going to see miracles of re reconciliation. Not only in relationship, you're going to see miracles of reconciliation in your finances. You're also going to say that somehow that the angels of the living God went back in to those places in your life where you lost. And they literally wrestled for the blessing. So that your birthright would be protected. Thank you, Lord. So that your birthright would be protected. You say, what does that mean? That's really important because that means that your family and your legacy will yes. not be affected in any way. Yes. Or form. It's beyond no harm shall come nigh your dwelling. And it moves into another level where everything that you've ever come in contact with is blessed it begins to take on a different form. It begins to blossom. It begins to grow. It begins to bear fruit. It's every. Have you ever known someone that they said, that person has a Midas touch? 
Yeah. You ever known somebody like that? Yeah. You ever known somebody who just had a gift with money and whatever they did, they just made money? Right. Yeah. If you know those people, make them raise their hand. We want to find out who you are because we need that. <laughs> Identify them and you'll get an email. Quick. Well, you know, she, she's got a mind of touch. Everything she does turns to gold. They got so much money, they have everything they've ever wanted. Everything she does turns to gold. She's got a mind of touch. Oh, yeah, I know that guy. Boats, trailers, property, businesses. He's got what they call a mind of touch. We sit around like believers. We, we talk ourselves into being pathetic. <laughs> you ever been around people like that? There's a guy I'll never have come preach for me again because he was begging money for a hamburger at the front. At my book table. At a conference where I knew how much we were paying him. I knew. You know how I knew? Because that's how much I wasn't getting. <laughs> I'm just being honest. That's the way to buy it up. I'm like, man, I know. He's at least getting this. Oh, I hope I'll make it out of here, man. If I just, if a poor preacher had some money for a hamburger. My God, Brother Hagen would kick your tail in if he heard you talk about that. I just hope I had some money for a hamburger. Get out of the ministry, bro. Yeah. What are you doing in the ministry begging for hamburger money? Come on. By, by the way, it's a lot different than going, hey, we need a couple thousand dollar seeds for missions or something like that. That's a lot different than panhandling for some hamburger money. How many know we should lift our vision a little bit higher than that? Yes. I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you right now, this is a day where you can serve notice on the enemy. Not for just the sake of serving notice on him, but some of you need to tell the enemy that he has no more jurisdiction in your life as it has to do with your finances or as it has to do with your ability to bless or be a blessing. How many can say hallelujah to that? Lift your hands to heaven. I want to begin to I want you to begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. I want you to take somebody right next to you by the hand. Lift one hand up. I want you to begin to pray for the person on your left and your right. Lord, I pray that the borders on our finances would be lifted off. I pray that there would be TNT dynamite as the sound of the trumpet blast comes. That that trumpet blast would blow out limitation. That that trumpet blast would blow out condemnation. That that trumpet blast would blow out not having enough. That that trumpet blast would blow out so loud, so long, so strong. That our downline, that our children and our children's children and their children and their children's children will have a blessing of legacy. A blessing of having more than enough. A blessing. A blessing that says, I am the God that not only heals, I'm not only the God that delivers, but also the blessing where he says, my arm is not short but my arm is extended to you yes. in this very moment by the Spirit of God. Somebody just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost now. Because I'm telling you, you're not going to live hemmed in. You're not going to live border. You're not going to live curved. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Glory. hallelujah, hallelujah. It's the sound of a trumpet blast saying, come up higher. Look at your neighbor and say, I told you to come up higher. He told you to come up higher. Look at your neighbor and say, well, then start flapping your wings and flap, 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 fly. Hallelujah. So I got to release this because this is a real key. And if you don't get this, you're probably, you're going to probably wish you got this today. Some of you probably do, do not remember this movie. Some of you probably do remember this movie. It was a movie about geese. 
How many remember the mo movie about geese? It was called Fly Away Home. Do you remember this movie? Yes. It's a movie about geese. It was a movie about these geese that got off track. And these geese got off track. They made friends with the, the boy. They made friends with this boy's dad. And they were just, the geese were part of their family. But the thing was, is the geese were all misplaced. Sounds like a bunch of Christian geese. <laughs> they were all misplaced. They were all in different places. They were all in different spaces. And the boy started to realize that as much as he loved the geese, he couldn't keep the geese anymore. Because it wouldn't be good to keep the geese because if he kept the geese as much as he loved them, loves them, the geese become pets. And their, believe it or not, their life wouldn't be as full. So as much as he loved them, even though he wanted to rescue them, he knew that they wouldn't... And, and they're geese. By the way, the geese don't know this. Do you understand that? It's not like the geese know. But the people that are taking care of the geese get it. And they start going, well... We might have a fun life with these geese, they're our pets, but they were made for more than this. Right. <clears throat> and I'll just stop right there, and I want to tell you, there are ministries that will just keep you right in that place right there. They'll say, you're fine, geese, as long as you stay in this field, I'll feed you the breadcrumbs. Come on. And I'll keep you in a little pen and I'll let you around and you can follow me around. I'll give you some more breadcrumbs and you just live here. And when you want to swim, we've got the little lake over here. As long as you're on the property, little breadcrumbs, little. A lot of people, a lot of ministries keep you there. But the father, just like in this movie, saw something that was a real problem. He said, I need to tell my son that we got to make a way for these geese to fly and get to where they belong so that they can live doing what they were made to do, so they can be what they were made to do. So it sounded really good, but what they did is they built these go-karts with wings, these altar lights. How many of you have ever seen those before? And they went up. Now this is, if you saw this movie, don't go out and watch this movie because anything I tell you. Because then if you don't like it, you'll say, He told me to watch it and I told you. You know what I mean? Somebody told me one time they blame me for everything. Literally. They're like, you told us. I had somebody I had somebody come to these meetings in New Iberia and they had a big throwdown, them and their pastor, because they said, I sit on a prayer line and leave your church. If you know me, I'd never say that. Now, if that's, if that's what the Lord screamed in your spirit, and you stay in your church, you're stupid. Because if I didn't say that and nobody else said it, the Lord screamed it out to where that's what you heard, you probably ought to leave. But don't blame me for it. Well, this boy, he decides, well, we're going to have to do this. So they, they build ultralights, the dad and the boy. And it sounds crazy, but they start giving flying lessons to these geese. They start literally everything from the takeoff to the landings to everything. And they get up in the air and they literally help these geese migrate. It was a really good, feel-good movie. You remember that movie, Fly Away Home? You know what they really could have, if they were truthful with that movie? Because Hollywood puts a good spin on everything. You know what they could have called that movie? Get the heck out of here, we're done. <laughs> have you ever been a parent that has a gaggle of geese? Or have your child has a bunch of pets and they're yours and all this? And at first it sounds fun and you want all the pets and then you're like, I didn't sign on for this. we got to get these things relocated. How many have ever been there before? Get the heck out fly away home and never come back? 
Think about how committed the dad had to be to build two flying contraptions. He wanted those geese out. So bad he built two flying contraptions and they flew the geese where they needed to go. You could have called it, get out of here. You have a bunch of believers that were made to be one thing, but they're trapped and they're in prison. And the, I hear the Lord saying that He's sending Jesus back into our current situations so that He can migrate us from one place into victory. Can you say hallelujah? Hallelujah. It's called a transmigration. It's a migration from fear and breakdown and lack and poverty and being misunderstood and cursings, no blessings. How many know it's time to migrate out of that into what God intended for you all along? Somebody say hallelujah. 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 Don't be afraid to praise the Lord. Don't be afraid to lift your voice or say hallelujah, lift up a shout. Because either way, you may think that you're a goose, but you're about to get found. Amen. No more lost geese. No more lost things. These seasons where we lose more than we gain, I say those seasons are over. Can somebody say hallelujah to that? Where you lose more than you gain. I know some people, they get excited about that. Yeah. Don't go to a casino with me. I don't want you around. We used to call those people Jesus. Yeah. You know those people? You're driving around and, and you're driving around through traffic. They go, I've never been in a one wreck ever. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. Somebody goes, I've never had the flu, not one time. A week later. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know those people? I'm talking about blessed. Blessed. Nobody's stealing your blessing. Nobody confusing you out of your blessing. How about this? No leaders or prophets to talk you out of what God's getting ready to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But the one thing you have to stop is He can deliver you from that, that one who curses. He can deliver you from that stronghold. He can literally pull you out of that prison. Yes. But I know some people that are addicted to just talking about how bad it is. You know anybody like that? They're addicted to it. They're more addicted to that than they are the Word of the Lord. You can even run a test. You get with somebody and you go, Ooh, good to see you tonight. Good to see you too. Oh, wow. Oh, look, she just went, Hey, Sandra, good to see you. You know that she, did you hear about that? Have you ever been there before? Don't lie. Some of y'all are lying bad. Y'all are lying bad. I talked two weeks ago about the guy who got up, one of, a pastor. Me and Gina were out in this parking lot one night. This pastor just tears in to this ministry for 30 minutes. And then he goes, well, we've talked about him for 30 minutes. I've talked about him. I have a rule. Anybody I'm going to talk about after I get done talking about him, I'm going to pray. I thought, that's some messed up stuff. Yeah, you better pray. Like, is that your habit? Let's go ahead and talk about him. When we get done, we'll pray. Well, I know she's a Jezebel. Hallelujah! Yes, she is. Did you hear what she did ten years ago? Yes, I did. Did you hear where it happened? Yes, I did hear where it happened. And you don't know there's more. Who, <laughs> girl? I know too. Because I seen it, and I heard about it, and then I heard little Elmo seen it on the other side of town. He saw it, and there were two. I knew that, girl. And all of a sudden, you're done. But well, we better pray for him. You're fooling yourself. You just went crazy off the deep end, and then you expect it's all going to get... No, no. See, you're using a prayer to break off something you shouldn't have to break off to begin with. You should be releasing and speaking life, not releasing death. But a lot of people get excited about this. Some people are literally enslaved to all the things that are wrong with them. Not because Jesus won't set them free from it or He had not healed them, but they've been carrying around all these things so long they get their identity from it. So every time you get around them, they, they go, well, so did you hear about... Uh... Somebody told me that like 
It was a few weeks ago, I was talking to somebody. He said, did you hear about my nervous breakdown? I said, no. And I said, my God. He said, yeah. I said, was it bad? Yes, it was. Horrible. And I said, man, when was the nervous breakdown? He said, 32 years ago. I said, bro, I got you beat. He's like, what? I'm like, I had one like 22 years ago, so I beat you. You're holding on to your nervous breakdown from 32 years ago, thinking you're moving forward in Jesus? You know, I had a nervous breakdown when I was 32. That's good how old he is, 75. Well, I'd have more joy in my life with my niece. My niece said a dirty word to me in a family reunion. That's why I beat my wife and all my children. That's why I'm addicted to Oxycontin. Somebody talked to me mean at a family reunion. Anybody have any pills or anything like that? That's why I'm the way I am. I mean, have you ever been around people like that? Or it's a family excuse. You start sitting around and then people start talking about all the demonic stuff going on. I'm hitting on something today. Talking about all the demonic stuff going on. And then somebody goes, well, you know, it's just our family. We all do it. No, I, how many want to break the family free? I mean, some of you just like, just come in with that table flipper anointing. Amen? Amen. Where Jesus is just flipping the tables over. Yep. If you're going to have a table flipping anointing, you better make sure Jesus called you to it. Otherwise, you're just flipping tables over. But did Jesus tell you to do it? I flip the tables over. Somebody even told me, they go, I got that table flipping anointing. I'm like, well... I don't know that that's something to brag about. Because Jesus was, when he, he had a reason to flip tables. He wasn't just walking in having a bipolar moment going, Wah! He was flipping tables because they were doing things in the temple what shouldn't have been done in the temple. So when he would come there, he wanted to set it right. And he was so full of holy anger and righteous anger that every time he got in there and saw that nonsense, he just wanted to make it right. But that's a whole lot different than somebody's just got a bad attitude talking about they got table flipping anointed. <laughs> Don't tell me that. Somebody asked me three days ago to pray for them. And I'm pretty sure, I'm just going to be honest with you, it's something that they're never going to have cast out. You know why? Because it's flesh. And I just sat there, and they kept on, and they kept on, and they kept on. Call it out! Either way, they sliced it. By the end, it was all stuff they, they should just stop. Not stuff I could cast out. They were like, what's the demon's name? <laughs> I want to be honest with you. I'm going to, call, I'm going to call it the way I see it. It's the same demon that's been tempting me. It's eating too much late at night. You're going to have to, well, bind that. No, you bind it. 2 a.m. when I'm not around. I can bind it. She's going to get hungry. That thing's going to click in. And, and some people, it's stronger than others. I know some people that have the surgery where they can only eat a certain amount. My friend Gil had that surgery. But he told me, he goes, the big problem is, even after they siphon it off, you're addicted in your mind. Come on. I'm telling you, man. Hallelujah, I mean. No, you want to get set free. I want to be free. How many want to be free? Yes. Free. Yes. Not saying I'm free and I'm not free. I've seen that too. Where people say, I'm free. You know? And then you start hanging out with them and you go, wait a second. I don't know if they're free or not. And some people say, I'm not religious. Have you ever been that? And they go, I'm not religious. 
And then you hang out with them maybe a half day and you go, my God, they're so religious. Yeah. They're not religious. This one guy, he used to always tell me, I don't know why I always used to say it. It was always about wine. It made me laugh. He goes, you can have some wine, but no matter what. No matter, it could be breakfast, it doesn't matter. You can have some wine, brother. I'm not religious. Like I'm talking like early in the morning, I'm thinking, you don't know me real good, I'm not going to be drinking this early. About one o'clock, you can have some wine, I'm telling you, brother, I'm not religious. Night comes, you can have some wine, brother. Just want to let you know I'm not religious. Just before we go to bed. Just in case you want to have some wine or anything. Not religious. The next day we wake up. Hey, I was thinking maybe I want to go in here. You can even have a drink there. I'm not religious. I was listening, listening, listening. So we get in this store. Because we were headed somewhere. He walked in with me and I said... I'll tell you what, man, if anything I know after a few days with you, you're not religious. Sure not. Thinking about some wine? I said, I don't know. I got my eye on something else. I said, I'm going to get that energy drink right there. And I need you to front me on some Pepto Bismol. He's like, he won. He's like, before you, and I, and I did, I said, and also I need Diet Coke because Gina wants a Diet Coke. Because before, before you do this, before you do this to yourself, do you know how bad Diet Cokes are for you? I have never had, he says, I have never had a Diet Coke. I wouldn't let my worst enemy drink one. Um, and I got to tell you, I've never bought one. So, I don't even know how to approach it. I don't know how I feel about paying for a Diet Coke for you or not. I can tell you that on the energy drinks, that's a no because you're the last person that needs an energy drink. You're, I think that an energy drink is, I'm just telling you right now, have you done all the studies? Because they're just about as bad as Diet Coke. Diet Coke gives you like 20 different forms of nomas and opanoma, amanoma. You show me hamas. And then, then the energy drinks, they're even worse. And uh, they cause all kinds of diseases. And on the Pepto-Bismol, did you know that, kind of, that company is owned by Satanists? And, and so, I just want you to know that uh, that's the way it is. You're in here, you come in here asking me, I'm going to shoot straight with you, brother, I can't do that. And I said, I've never seen anything like it. He says, what? I said, you were shoveling wine at me, booze at me, from 8 a.m. till the sun come up the next day. Everything was, you want to drink, I'm not really, just want to drink, I'm not really, just want to drink, I want to And then all of a sudden, I want Diet Coke or an energy drink or Pepto-Bismol, and you manifest and won't give me any of it. You were... Not religious about wine, but you're totally religious about this thing over here. Let me tell you what that is. That's called hypocrisy. I'm just going to tell you right now. God is truly setting people free from things. And we need to give people room to be free after God sets them free. Could you say hallelujah to that? Hallelujah. And here's another thing. Free from religion. Here's what I hear the Lord saying. You know that thing where he talks about if you're not received, you take your shoes off and you shake the dust off your feet and you move on. Can I just tell you one thing the Holy Ghost wants to do tonight is he wants us to shake the dust off our feet. Because I'm telling you, we're going from breakdown and we're moving into victory and we're not going there with the past breakdowns, the past mistakes. The past mess ups, we're moving into victory, and that's where this train is going. Can you say hallelujah? No more breakdowns. And no more lying to ourselves about breakdowns. And no more lying to yourself when you're going through hell trying to make believe it's heaven. Because you start talking like that, and people will think you're crazy. You say, Well, that's a good thing. I don't know that it's a good thing sometimes. 
Some people don't need to be perceived as more crazy than they already are. I'm going to prophesy over you, don't worry. I'm just massaging all that other junk out. Some of you are like, I can't my word. He just keeps telling stories again. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Lord's telling me to say something. I just don't want to get in trouble. But He's really telling me to say it. I'm afraid, y'all. Because if I say it, <laughs> some of y'all are blaming other people, and it's your fault. Somebody's like, I knew Pastor David would get a word for you. That's for you, not for me. Ooh, I knew he'd see through your self-righteousness. You're going to get set free, sister. I used to not like to go to some meetings with my friends because they were always going, tonight will be the night you get free, David. Like I was some kind of real high, like, high-risk patient. <laughs> be going to a meeting everybody else like we're going to have a good time at the meeting but they'd be telling me stuff like and you'll finally come into your right mind <laughs> like what's that about <laughs> somebody even told me we were headed into a meeting one night and they go maybe tonight will be the night God heals your ADD <laughs> I was like I don't even have that I don't have ADD and they were like what you don't have something? It's like, I'm pretty sure I have something, but it's not that. <laughs> Nobody does ministry of helps like your OCD people. But those people are ministry of helps. I think that needs to go over here. <laughs> So Gina, Lord, I don't want to get in trouble telling this story. Y'all have to all promise not to speak a word of this after this meeting. Raise your right hand and everybody say, I want to tell off on myself, but I'm not telling off on myself. I'm telling off on Gina. She's not here to defend herself. So I'm going to tell stories about her. And I'm going to get abused later for it. So Gina and I were married. We, we still are, by the way, married. <laughs> it's the way that came out. Because somebody will be like, I knew they weren't married. They're living together. <laughs> and by the way, Gina asked, Gina told me I was marrying her. That's the truth. She's like, do you like it? And she pulled a good trick on me. Because we got in the apartment. She's like, do you like it? And I'm like, oh yeah, I love it. I go, when can we move in? She goes, we can't, big guy, because we're not married yet. I was like, she's like, you want to marry me? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and we got married. We've been married ever since. <laughs> Had a few little things. Hold on. <laughs> But we fought through it. Sometimes we literally fought through it. We're like, fight through! We have been. But I'll never forget, like, when we first, when we first got married, at that point, Gina thought, she really did. She was like, she thought I was very close to perfect. I thought she was close to perfect. So we were like, and people would come over and they'd be like, 
How many know there's some truth serum about to come? You know that, right? Because my friends would come over. Look out, Corey. Don't say it that quick. Um, my friends would come over and they go, So have y'all had like a fight yet? And I would say, No. Why? Why? It'll happen. And I'd be like, Don't be speaking that. And they'd get around me. Some of my friends would go, Y'all get a mom so good, it just makes me sick. Y'all have not had one fight. And we would literally say stuff like, <laughs> We're just that couple. We don't fight. No, you know, I mean, I, and we get it. Other couples do, we don't. How do you know that didn't last long? <laughs> so I don't know, it was about two months in, and Gina had really done something, like, wrong. Like, it's kind of mean, really. And she was like, and when she, and she doesn't do that very often, but she was like, then she pulls this, and she goes, kind of like, well, that's the way it is, then. <laughs> I'm like, wait a second here. It feels like you just said that's the way it is and kind of did your head like that and walked off. But the thing is, is it's not going to be that way. Um, what I said. <laughs> we didn't have kids back then around us like all the time. So, like, back then, I followed Gina around more. Like, she would walk, but I followed her. So, I'd be like, so, are you just going to be doing this? Because, you know, you're, you're real, like, kids. And she's like, yeah. I'm like, so, you're just going to, like, do this and just walk off? She's like, I can't walk very far. You're right behind me. Give me some space. And I'm like, I'm going to give you some space. What you said was me. And it was wrong. And, and it's all because you made a mistake. <laughs> and she says, and I'm not kidding. Okay, let's deal with this. I'm like, all right, let's. She says, I'm just going to clear this up right now for you. I don't make mistakes. You do. My world, everything, I couldn't breathe good for me. Everything went red. I think I even started screaming. I screamed. I couldn't comprehend that she thought she had made any mistakes. She thought she had never made a mistake. So later that night, I'm like, she couldn't admit that. There's no way. So I was like, hey babe, love you. Sorry for that disagreement and all. I'm doing fine now. My eyesight came back. I'm not raging anymore. I'm good. But just, just so we're clear and all, I mean, you make mistakes. I mean, we all do. I don't know what you didn't understand. I don't make mistakes. You do. So that night as the sun fell, we were laying in bed. She was wearing her pajamas. I was wearing mine. They matched, by the way. That was back when we cared about that kind of thing. Early days. Now I just wear the craziest stuff to bed. I can't comment on what she wears to bed. I can just tell you, we don't take near as much time as we did in the beginning. Many years have gone by. Like a matter of fact, she laughed at me two days ago because I got up and there's nothing that makes you feel good like your wife just laughing at you. Because it was like one of those first things that I'm just standing 
in the morning, something's itching on top of my head. I don't have my shirt on. I'm wearing my my uh, my pajama bottoms, you know, and I'm just kind of doing this like this, doing my head, and Gina's literally laughing at me. <laughs> that, but this is back when we used to match. And we're laying in bed, and I was so full of rage all night long because this woman <coughs> feels <coughs> right. She thinks she is right. She thinks that she's never wrong. So I started doing a count of just the things she had done wrong since I met her. <laughs> just that part of the list was enormous. <laughs> then I started taking things that she had admitted to me before she was with me. I felt like those things were wrong. I wrote those down. <laughs> Once she fell asleep and I knew she was asleep, because she's a light sleeper, I rolled out of bed. I went into the living room. I got my notebook out and I started writing. It started out as a, just a couple pages. <laughs> it turned into a book of all the things that she had done wrong. And I said, when she wakes up, it's a Saturday. We're going to have a little book reading. She's going to find out that she's wrong. I mean, I wrote till, I mean, into the night, and I started getting more angry as I was writing. And you will know. I mean, I was. So when the morning came, she was real like slow to get up, and she came in, she was still wearing her pajamas. Did you have a good night's sleep? I said, yes, I did. <laughs> Do you like some coffee? I would. Oh, it's so good to be off on this Saturday. Yes, it is. We can just have coffee and visit together. I said, yes, we can. But I, I was just thinking, I'm about to read you the book of all the things you did wrong. And she comes and she puts her arm around me. I'll never forget it. And she goes, before you read whatever you're going to read to me. She said, I just want to tell you. I'm wrong. Sometimes. I just don't like admitting it. And the way you confronted me reminded me of my father. So I was really angry with you. I was probably wrong, but I knew I'm not always right, but... It was just the way I responded to you. And I just wanted to tell you that I'm not lucky. That would mean that it just happened. But I'm blessed to have you as my husband. I'm like, really? She's like, yes. She's like, matter of fact, I didn't realize how blessed I was. Will you forgive me? And I said, yes, I will. And she was crying, it was so sweet, and we hugged each other. And she goes, okay, you can read now. <laughs> and I said, you know, I don't feel like it's the right season for me to share what I wrote down about you. And me and Gina, literally, we had this thing happen not long ago where we came across a few journals. We found her journal that she wrote when she was hacked at me. And we found my journal, which were a lot more disorganized and funny, of things I wrote. I mean, it got kind of stupid, too. It's like, hers would be like, and tell him to just stop. You know? But here's the great part. We're working closer on 20 years. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. She knows she's wrong now. There are a lot of believers. They don't want to believe they're wrong ever. Amen. 
They never admit it's like they think it's some sort of a virtue. We're not in politics here. We're not President Trump. We get it. Leaders like that and places like that, they're not going to apologize a whole lot. They kind of roll a certain way. But we're just believers in the army of God. I think some of us need to admit that we don't have it all right. I think some of us would have a lot more blessing in our lives if we uprooted bitterness and unforgiveness. How many would like for that trumpet blast to hit bitterness and unforgiveness? Can you say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Somebody's like, well, I, I don't know how I feel about bitterness. Leave that one. <laughs> Y'all came, y'all are really, y'all came in, y'all were, y'all were looking for trouble today when y'all came around. I got a lot of fire to you. Today. I feel like this group of ladies right here, Neil, is dangerous. Like dangerous to the, to, to darkness. Yeah. You know what? I'm telling you right now, somebody said, what's revival going to look like? I'm telling you, it's going to look like God's people not settling for second anymore and not settling for the old days anymore. Not settling a bunch of geese being hand fed saying I was made to fly. I was made for destiny. I was made to soar. I was made to break the molds. I was made to break the glass ceiling. I was made to lay hold of the promise. Somebody say hallelujah. I mean, you're breaking out of that. That's what happens when the trumpet blast comes. When the trumpet blast comes. Yeah. The Spirit of the Lord says, I want to speak this over you, Tracy. Y'all stretch your hands toward Tracy. The Spirit of the Lord says, in this season, I am calling you up. And there will be a sound of a trumpet blast. And I will call you up from one place into another realm. But as I call you up, no. Know that I have called you to be one that trains and equips. And I'm going to give you the strategy of how to train and equip. But I'm also going to give you a new mantle of humility. The Lord says, if you'll embrace this mantle of humility, I'm going to release blessing like you've never known before. I'm going to cause men to give unto your bosom, press down, shaking together, running over. I'm opening... A portal of it's a it's a threat it comes from underneath a threshold but it's a portal of overflow it's a portal of overflow and it's not a glass it's not a little cup it's not just something to put a little something in or a mug but it is a barrel it is a barrel and it flows from a water source it's like a rushing raging river I am releasing you into the overflow, says the Lord. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stretch to heaven, if you will. Amen. Just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. To come up higher. To come up higher. This word's for Jenny and Norris. To come up higher. I see laying hold of something. It's, it's not a mantle. It's like a more like a baton, and I see laying hold of it. And I hear the Lord saying, There's victory. It's going to be this last leg feels like it's requiring more from the both of you than what you have. But the Lord says this is the final press before the greatest victory you've known as a couple. The Lord says if you'll run as, you'll, if, as you're joined in a balance, you'll know victory and you'll step on in to victory together. Not alone, for I've caused you and called you. In times past, I've caused you to walk in balance together. And the enemy's done everything he can to try to siphon off and try to separate and try to divide and try to pull.
pull at the fabric of your relationship. But I hear the Lord saying, not today. I hear the Lord saying, I am establishing. I hear the Lord saying, Nehemiah. I hear the Lord saying, I am building a wall. I hear the voice of the Lord saying, don't come down off your wall, but work it together, work it together, work it together, because I have joined you in balance. There will be some things that you lift, Norris, that she doesn't, and there will be some things that you do, Jenny, that Norris doesn't necessarily do, but you'll complement each other. This is a season where your gifts will complement him and his gifts will complement you. And I'm going to give you great clarity. And I also hear the Lord saying there's a new filter because there's been something in regard to filter. I believe it's like a life filter, however. There's something in regard to a new filter for life, a filtration system for your life, for your spirits. Very, very important 90 days because through this 90 days, it's a gestation time. But as you are on the wall together, I am going to cause the blessing to be released. And it will be something you experience together as you work the wall together and as you complement one another in battle. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Wow, that's good stuff. Just stretch to heaven, just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> E araba sande de beshete de biara ma kore de ya. E araba sande de beshete de beshete de beshete. E araba sande de beshete de de araba sande de ma kore de ya. E araba sande de beshete de beshete de Joy. Put your hands to heaven, joy. I hear three words. I hear prosperity, steadfastness, and righteousness. Prosperity, steadfastness, and righteousness. For I'm going to cause you to be steadfast. Well, there are some things you're going to navigate in this, in this current climate. And it's not been easy to be steadfast in the past, but you'll be able to be Steadfast in this season. Immovable. Not shaken by what someone says. Not shaken by accusation. Not shaken by words. But I'm going to cause you to be steadfast. Immovable. Immovable. Not swayed by what someone's opinion is one way or another. But you're going to know that you know that you know that you know in your spirit. For I am bringing great accuracy to your discernment. In times past, your accuracy and your ability to discern has been clouded. But in these next few weeks, I'm going to rein in discernment in you. And I'm going to cause discernment and focus to come like you've never, never known before. And there will be a steadfastness you will not be blown by the wind. You will not be blown from one side to another side to another side. But I'm going to give you revelation on how to activate blessing. And I feel that it's for you too, Jenny and Norris and Tracy. I'm going to give you revelation on how to activate blessing. How to activate blessing. And the Lord says you need to look for ways to activate blessing. But it's in these next few weeks as you activate blessing through this new steadfastness of spirit that I'm going to release my righteousness and I'm going to cause prosperity to come upon you. I'm going to prosper you. I'm going to cause things to bloom, grow, and I'll also cause others to take notes or to take notice, if you will, of what it is the Lord's doing. It's going to be that important. It's going to be that drastic. Some new things being poured into you. 
And the Lord says, activate blessing. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Slip your hands to heaven. We activate blessing right now. By the way, when we do the when I do the calls, what I'm gonna give you, if you guys want to be a part of that, I'm gonna tell you how to do the service. I'm going to be ministering in the prophetic a lot like that. And I'm going to be teaching tons on word of knowledge. A lot on word of knowledge, how to discern, how to hear the Lord, prophesying. It's going to be awesome. I want to give this word to Nettie. No, just stretch your hands to heaven, Nettie. And everybody can just pile on the Holy Ghost on her. She's been coming to my meetings a long time. Neil, you may be a little bit more whatever's over there. A little bit of ice, a little bit. Don't don't worry. Just pour something in there. What you brought? It's fine. The preacher drink. Doctor Pepper is a preacher drink. Did y'all know that? Did y'all know that? All the sun. Every uh, brother Shambach used to drink it. All the Word of Faith guys drink it. All the old preachers drink Doctor Pepper. Isn't it made with grooms? It is. It probably means they need to they need to be a clean vessel for the Lord of Fun. Okay. Here's what's gonna be released. And, and y'all just start praying the Holy Ghost. I want to pray this over you, Daddy. Here's what I hear the Lord saying. He says that you're not gonna be smothered any longer. I said, Lord, what's what is she being smothered? What's she being smothered by? It says guilt. She's being smothered by guilt. And I heard the Lord say, and He literally told me, He says, "You tell her that first. I wasn't going to do it because I've spoken all these other sweet words to everybody. Then how was I going to tell you? You're not going to be smothered by guilt anymore." But I hear the Lord saying you're not going to be smothered by guilt anymore because there are things that you thought you were guilty of that you weren't even guilty of. And I saw the Lord removing guiltiness from you. And I saw the Lord taking stain from you. And I saw the Lord taking the fractured places. I saw places that were just slightly fractured. It was almost like you'd see a hairline flat fracture in an x-ray or, or when you see a bone up on the screen. And I saw all these hairline fractures in various places. And I heard the Lord say those are places where her spirit was fractured. It wasn't bones, but it was literally your spirit had been fractured. Many wounds, many contusions, many bruised places. And I hear the Lord say that blanket that's smothering you he says, now I'm going to put a healing balm. I'm going to release a healing balm. And it's going to go into those cracked places. And those fragmented places. And those places in your spirit that were broken are going to be healed. They're going to be fused together. And no more fractures. But you are going to be healed. And you are going to be a picture of what it looks like when God makes something whole and new again. You are going to be new again. There is a newness coming to you. There is a newness coming to you. And the Lord says, I'm going to show you what it means to plant. I'm going to show you what it... I hear the Lord saying that. I'm going to show you. He says, I'm going to show you what it means to plant. So there's going to be some things that you do in seed form. But when you plant those things in seed form, you're going to receive harvest like you've never known before. You're literally going to see harvest come from things that you planted in in seed form. And I hear the Lord saying... Intercede, stay in the secret place, and just water those seeds with praise and water those seeds with worship. But guiltiness is gone. No more to be smothered by guiltiness. And those fractured places in your spirit are being healed. Somebody say, Hallelujah. We seal that word. Y'all begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. We seal that word over Nettie. The Holy Ghost. Neri estende le voglia, sale e nestete, su rie se freni, shatabari ando. How many love the Lord? Yes. I want to tell you right now, I believe what's going to happen in terms of what's going to fall on us now is a quickening. 
I told Gina this, that there's a quickening coming to the people of God. A quickening like you've never known before. How many want to be quickened? Yeah, I do. How many want to get plugged in? Let me get plugged in. Yes. I want to release that. I want to release that plugging in over Nidra right now. Just switch your hands to work. There's a plugging in. There's a plugging in. I see you being plugged in. I literally see the prongs where it would go into a power cable or some sort of a power uh, plug up. And I see those, those prongs going in. And you're life, your spirit is being plugged up. I said, Lord, what are the two prongs? He says, revelation and stewardship. Revelation and stewardship. The Lord wants you to know that He is pleased with your stewardship of the revelation. And it will be the revelation and the stewardship that will become a power. There will be a power released through the revelation and stewardship. And there will be that which comes from the source, but you'll be a conduit where this power is released. And I hear the Lord saying, stewardship and revelation. The Lord says, as you prepare yourself to receive what I'm going to pour into you from the very throne of God, know this, I am releasing something that will release a sound and those that have tried to assassinate and those that have tried to accuse, and those that have tried to sow seeds of discord, they won't even be able to stand in the presence of that fine wisdom and revelation that comes, and stewardship that comes, because there will be a power that's released, and that power will come as a quickening, as a quickening, so you'll see and be able to understand and steward over this new quickening that's coming. It's that same quickening that came upon Lazarus when he came out of the tomb. It's that same quickening that was on Ezekiel as he began to speak and prophesy over those va or over that valley of dry bones. Those bones were quickened. And you dry see a quickening coming as you speak the word of the Lord. As you command life, there will be a quickening. And you will see life where there was short death. Where things were just laying in one holding pattern and they've been there for many, many years, you will release words of life and when you do, a quickening will come. The Lord says, prepare yourself for a quickening. And those that come in contact with you, it'll literally be as if they're plugging in to an alternate power source. You're going to be able to really, really feed others that quickened anointing that you're walking in. People are going to feed off of that. You're going to radiate that new glory. You're going to radiate that new authority. You're going to radiate that new power. Somebody say hallelujah. Show, lift your hands to heaven. We just want to just pray in tongues a little bit more. I want to release this over Jackie in April. I hear the Lord say boldness. I hear the Lord say, I'm releasing boldness. I said, what is this, Lord? He said, it's a strand of DNA for them. And you're going to tell them what, what is all in this DNA that I'm releasing tonight. I said, what is it, Lord? He says, boldness. He says, the other one is courage. He says, that's the other strand. I'm releasing courage. He also said, I'm releasing truth. Truth, 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 truth. No more lies, but I'm replacing the lies with truth. I'm replacing the accusation with that which is pure. No more lies, but I'm bringing truth. I'm also revealing, says the Lord. I'm bringing revelation. I'm bringing courage, revelation, boldness, truth. I hear the Lord also say that I'm going to release in your family the fear of the Lord. I'm going to release the fear of the Lord. And your family is going to start experiencing the Lord together. And there are going to be things that only the Lord can do. And you're going to have to have answers from heaven. But the Lord wants you to know that those answers that are in heaven are about to begin to manifest. Somebody say hallelujah. How many want heaven to manifest? Yes, so the Lord says, I'm going to manifest in boldness. I'm going to manifest in courage. I'm going to manifest in truth. 
I'm going to manifest in wisdom. Lift your hands to heaven because some of y'all can get that. But I'm going to manifest in wisdom. I'm going to give you wisdom that comes from an alternate source where everybody else is having to sniff out wisdom, man's wisdom, earthly wisdom, temporal wisdom, and wisdom in the temporal realm. The Lord says, I'm tying you up to eternal wisdom. Hallelujah. And I'm going to give you greater knowledge discernment and fear of the Lord than you've ever had before. I hear the Lord saying, I'm going to release grace in the camp. I hear the Lord saying, I'm going to be merciful. I hear the Lord saying, I'm going to release a prosperous spirit. I said, Lord, what does that mean? I said, is that a prosperous mind? He says, no, I'm going to release a prosperous spirit. The Lord wants you to know that He is positioning you so that your spirits will prosper. And that will begin to manifest within the next 30 days. You're going to see a quickening. That's a drill word in the spirit tonight. Everybody say quickening. But you're going to begin to prosper. There are going to be initial things that will be signs of prosperous and your spirit prosper. Your prosperous spirit, if you will, being released. So let's just begin to all say hallelujah to that. Father, we thank you for what you're releasing. Room Suriende. As we come up higher, 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 as we come up higher. Can I obey the Lord and just give a few more? That be okay with everybody? Sure. Let's take a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 If you're not in favor, we're doing it anyway. <laughs> I want to give a couple of uh, do a couple words that I think are really important. I saw a wheel within a wheel. How many remember the prophet saw a wheel within the middle of a wheel? How, how many know who that prophet was? That's right, Ezekiel. Y'all can say it, with, say it with authority. Ezekiel. If I were to say that I saw a wheel within a wheel, you'd say, he's on something. If you read what Ezekiel was seeing in Scripture, it looks like he's seeing a UFO. It's, I mean, I'm just telling you right now, it's far out stuff. Yeah. It's a wheel within a wheel. I started to see a wheel within a wheel. And I heard the Lord say, the inside, the, the spokes of the wheel. <clears throat> well, the first thing I saw is I saw a wheel where all the spokes were broken off. And the inside of the, the hub, the hub had come off, all the spokes were disjointed and broken. Just looked like it was ready for the scrap heap. And then I saw the Lord bring out another wheel, giant wheel. The hub was repaired and all these spokes were shooting forth from the hub. And I heard the Lord say it's fivefold ministry. And I said, what's that look like? He said, it's Holy Ghost fivefold ministry. It's fivefold ministry that's done the right way. And it will become a hub four spokes and there will be spokes that come off the hub i said lord what does that look like he said it's going to be a whole lot of believers from this place it's going to be a whole lot of believers all around lafayette it's going to be a whole lot of believers around this region around acadiana and you're going to see a revival of five-fold ministries and you're going to see more spokes coming out of those wheels in the next two years you're going to see more spokes more ministries there will be more ministries birthed within the next two years in Acadiana and in Lafayette than you've ever seen before. There will be so many ministries that are being birthed. People will literally come to this city so they can be taught and trained on how to build and how to launch out ministries. This is going to be an area that's known for launching ministries and restoring ministries also. Restore. Everybody just say restore. Restore. See, Trudy, that works for you. You're getting it. You already knew that. So this word is specifically for Trudy, but it's also for more than just Trudy. But I will tell you specifically, that's what that hub is. It's fivefold ministry. Specifically, it's giving 
an avenue for ministries to be highlighted so that they can come out like those spokes on the wheel. And the Lord is going to give wisdom to those that fellowship together and how to be blessings to one another. Everybody say one another. So in other words, there's going to be no more competition. Not a lot of walls up. Not a lot of dividing walls. But the Lord says those spokes on the wheel. Trudy, I saw you working within the spokes. Somewhere between the hub and the spokes. I saw you doing a whole lot there. And, and I see the Lord using you in this hour in that way. The Lord says is you just stay humble. As you just stay open. And you just stay as what you are, which is an intercessor. And don't ever allow the gift of intercession to be cheapened. Because it's that, it, it's, that's the premier thing. You keep the gift of intercession where it needs to be. And you watch what I do. But I'm establishing the fivefold, and I'm causing those folks to be set in order as they're connected to the hub, says the Lord. Now that word, Trudy knows where that word hits for her. Everybody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love it. I love it. And, and I know a lot. Listen, I'm telling you, if you like this kind of prophetic ministry, I'm going on a tear where those that want more of it, I'm going to tell you later at the end of the service how to do it. I'm going to tell you when I'm going to be doing my first uh, teaching, training, prophetic word of knowledge, you know, kind of like hour of prophecy thing. I'm going to tell you when I'm going to be doing it. I'm excited about it. How many are excited about what God's doing? Okay. This word's for Kim. I hear the Lord saying, more. And as I was asking the Lord what that meant in terms of more, I heard the Lord say, tell her that she's going to touch new realms of revelation. You're going to touch new realms of revelation. I said, Lord, what does that mean? He says, well, she can't touch those new realms unless she does it through worship. So there's something that's really going to be on your private time with the Lord, your secret time with the Lord, and that what you're doing in your secret time, in your soaking time, in your intercessor's time with the Lord, where you're just with Him. The Lord says you're going to touch new realms. And He says that He's going to open up new avenues. There are going to be some faucets, if you will, or channels that have been kind of closed up. But I saw the Lord literally commissioning angels. I said... What's going on with that? And he says, I'm sending the angels in to clear up the pipes. And this word also has to do with you, Judy. Uh, Jenny, I'm sorry. And the Lord saw, I saw this really, really clear. But I saw the Lord and I saw all these angels coming as I was praying for you. But the Lord said, this part of the word is for you too. But these angels had these big shovels. And I said, what's going on with that? And they were going to these wells. And these wells have been stopped up, just like the Philistines had stopped the wells up. Uh, I believe it was that, uh, I believe that Isaac had, had uh, the Philistines had uh, stopped them up with trash, with whatever. You can, you can do a whole lot of damage when you mess up somebody's water supply. Right. And so I saw supply lines that have been disrupted for you. And I saw supply lines that had been disrupted for you, but I saw angels coming in and literally re-digging and taking the, the trash out and re-digging those wells for you so that your supply line wouldn't be disrupted anymore and so that you would get the pure essence of what it is that was reserved for you. No raider, no enemy is going to have access to it. And that supply line will no longer be interrupted, but you're just going to know what it means to be able to just tap in and immediately have blessing. You're going to know what it means to tap in and have immediate answers. You're going to know what it means to tap in and things begin to manifest immediately. How many want things to manifest? Yeah. You're like, I don't know what that means. I don't know. I'm telling you, you know what it means. You want... How many want your prayers to be answered? Let's say that. Yes. How yes. many would like for your prayers to be answered quicker, sooner, yes, faster? Yes. Yes. How many of you want when we when we pray for breakthrough? How many want breakthrough and you want it now, not tomorrow? Yes. Right? I want it now. Yes. Not not yesterday. Now. <clears throat> now. I want what's fresh now. Now. 
Just lift your hand to heaven and say, now, Holy Ghost. Now, now, now. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Now. Now. Now, Lord. Now, Lord. Now, Lord. As the overcomer steps forward, I hear the Lord say, What will you do to stand in my fire? What will you do to stand in my fire? What will you do to stand in my fire? For this is a season to stand in the fire. Standing in the fire. Standing in the fire to be purified. Standing in the fire to be refined. Standing in the fire so that that which is in the fire doesn't consume you. But the fire brings change. The fire brings the burning, the changing. The fire brings the dross out. The fire brings the impurities out. The fire brings that which has been weighing you down, the dross, and that which has been dragging on you. The fire takes care of that too. It's a fire of blessing. It's a fire of refinement. It's a fire of shaping and forming. For the Lord says, I'm going to reshape and I'm going to refashion. There are some things that will be refashioned. There are some things that will be reshaped because the original shape and the original intent was not there. But I hear the Lord say, I'm going to come in and I'm going to refashion, I'm going to reshape, and I'm going to cause my fire to burn red hot so that what was not moldable and pliable will be easily pliable and moldable again. I'm going to make something awesome. I'm going to make something priceless. I'm going to do something unique in this season. The fire is not unto death and the fire is not unto wrath. But the fire is to refine so I can release a greater glory. Lift your hands to heaven. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. It's to release a greater glory. A greater glory. A greater glory. We went through a season one time. I want to share this as I close up. We went through a season. It wasn't that long ago. We go through a lot of seasons. I remember when the Lord, when I really started traveling and going outside of the United States, I remember. And a lot of y'all remember. And I remember that when I first started out, I remember people would like, you know, first thing you need to know is you're always going to have haters and you're always going to have people that tell you you cannot do it. How many know that's true? Amen. Some of y'all aren't being honest about that. <coughs> Unless you're just surrounded by people that are just all about you and just doing good. <laughs> This morning when I when I was getting going, I was thinking about all the different things the Lord had done through me in seasons where He just did so much I just couldn't even believe it. And I look back at all the different things and, and I remember, for instance, I'll give you some for instances. I remember when I was telling people, hey, we're getting ready to go to Haiti. And I remember when I was telling people about Haiti, and I would tell them I'm getting ready to go, I said, we're going to have 10,000 people saved. And literally, I would have people at the service say, you don't have to say that, because if God does if you don't have 10,000 people saved, then you'll be disappointed. God doesn't want you to be disappointed. And I would get really discouraged, not because I didn't know I heard from God, because I think, I heard from God, but... Why can't they see? Have you ever been there? Oh, yeah. Why can't they see that I heard from God? Yeah. 
And we had so many people saved in Haiti. I mean, we just quit even counting. I mean, it just blew our minds. I mean, th- I mean, tens of thousands. I mean, I was showing somebody just uh, last week a picture. It was uh, Larry. I was showing Larry a picture of an altar service. But he just thought it was the people. I said, no, those are just the people that got called into ministry. Over 6,000 in one service in Haiti. And people didn't even think, they thought I was off, that I was saying 10,000 were going to get saved. We had 6,000 called into ministry. Forget about being saved. We, we probably had somewhere around 90,000 people saved during that crusade. Wow. I mean, no, that's a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, it was so many people every night. We lost, we totally lost count. You couldn't keep up with it. We didn't have books. We didn't have enough to keep up with it. I was thinking about the way God used us over in Europe. I was thinking about the way God used us in Central America. I remember when we used to talk about having a missions house, or we talked about having an apostolic thing, and changing things, and feeding kids, and educating kids, and setting up ministry like that. People were like, you can't do that. And I just, the Lord spoke to me and told me to do it, and we started to do it. And even this year, we've, we've still been able to still keep it going and still somehow continue in what we're doing. And I, I still don't know how we've been able to do that, but the Lord has blessed us in that area. And still, isn't this awesome? Do you know everything that has gone forward in Guatemala and everything that's gone forward in Belize, do you realize it's gone forward and still goes forward? Because we stepped out in faith and were willing to push it when nobody else was. Wow. And today there are people being ministered to that would not be ministered to any other way. They're ministered to that way. Is that not amazing? Yeah. Hallelujah. Think about this. Yeah, you can praise the Lord for that. Yeah. Hallelujah. Think about this one. I really want you to think about this. This is so cool. This makes me feel good, Nika. Tonight, I don't even know what ministries or what missionaries or what ministers are down insane by Belize tonight, but I can tell you this, whoever they are, they have a ministry headquarters house to sleep in so that they don't have to know what it's like not to have good running water, so that they don't have to know, they don't have to sleep in squalor tonight out on the mission field. Somewhere tonight, there are people that are missions, missionaries and missions people that are sleeping and they are well taken care of tonight because Gina and I God used us to pioneer something yeah. in Belize. Isn't that amazing yeah. that God does that? Amen. I think about all the... I, I, I want to encourage you tonight. I think about all the, the, the effectiveness we've had in Africa, in Uganda. There are churches. When we started going over, my, I call him my pastor. He's, just, he's not my pastor. I call him my pastor over there. He's my friend. When, you, when I first met him, you wouldn't even know who he is in a meeting like this. He's the quietest guy. You wouldn't even know who he is. He's just sitting there. When I met him, he had 250 churches. He was T.L. Osborne's. How many have ever heard of T.L. Osborne? T.L. Osborne. He was T.L. and Daisy Osborne. He and his wife were their spiritual kids. Here's what you need to hear. How many? I want you to say this word, transference. Transference. Say it like you believe it. Transference. Because we were having a meeting on a Sunday morning. And T.L. Osborne passed away. This happened here when I was in Latvia. We were at Jenny's house having a meeting. It was on a Sunday, an afternoon. We had a barbecue, kind of like this afternoon. And somebody, Robin Rogers was there, actually. And somebody said, T.L. Osborne just passed away. You know what I said in that meeting? This is before I traveled anywhere. You know what I said? I had pancreatic cancer at that point. You know what I said? I'm going to take T.L. Osborne's mantle. I'm going to take his mantle. How many believe you can just grab a mantle if you want it? Some of you are afraid to admit that you believe it. How many just would like to believe you can grab a mantle? Okay. The minute I heard T.L. Osborne pass away, I said, that's mine. I even started telling people. I think I told Robin Rogers. I said, I got T.L. Osborne's mantle. She said, you can't do that. 
I said, I just did it. She goes, why? I go, nobody told me I couldn't do it. I go, I wasn't supposed to. She goes, I don't know if you're supposed to or not. I said, well, I got it now. Well, what are you going to do with it? That's He used to do crusades in Uganda. What are you going to do with it? Guess what? I get a call from Uganda. I go over to preach. I get over there preaching. I don't even know these people. I get over there preaching doing this big crusade. Pastor's got 250 churches. He gets up. As I'm preaching, he gets up. When I finish preaching, he gets up and said, tells the entire church, he said, we've been praying for many years. And he said, i got to tell you something, David. He said, T.L. Osborne's my spiritual father. Daisy Osborne's my spiritual mother. He said, as you were preaching today, the Lord said that you got T.L. Osborne's mantle. He didn't... You guys aren't putting it together. Yeah. We didn't talk about that. Right. I didn't know that. I get over in Uganda. I had just said a couple months earlier, I'm going to take that mantle. And now I'm sitting with his spiritual kids and they're going, you have it. Yes. yes. You hadn't even coordinated. Right. So many signs and wonders on that trip you can't believe. I went into a radio station. Some of you have heard this. I spoke fluent Swahili right. for the duration of the interview. I don't speak Swahili. That's right. Some of you are like, and? <laughs> I don't speak Swahili. Right. But I got it supernaturally. Yeah. And I truly believe that was when we started. Then I said, the first trip, I said, I'm coming back. And I started getting texts from the U.S. as I'm over there. My friend Gil's gone to be with the Lord, but he was wrong on this one. He, he, he didn't talk to me for about two months me going to Uganda. He said, you're missing it. Then I got over there. And you better know, when I started hitting the home run, I started sending all the pictures home. He goes, don't gloat. And I said, I'm gloating. I said, you told me it wasn't going to happen. And then, of course, Gil said, well, you need a guitar player, man. You need me to come over and preach. God, you need to break that thing open. I got that mantle. Yeah. He was just floating around. T.L. Osborne's dead. I got it. How many like to just grab a hold of the anointing like that? Come on, yes. ladies. Yes. Yes. We're talking about something you can actually get here. You can grab this. I got up. And then I say, I'm coming back to preach. Everybody's like, when are you coming back? Two months. Somebody said, that's too short. <laughs> you got to make it longer. That's too big a trip. You can't do it that fast. Todd Bentley even hit me up. He says, that's too quick. I know you probably haven't been trained, but that's too quick. You'll never be able to get the crusade together that fast. And you'll never be able to raise the money for the stadium. I said, I'm not raising money for the stadium. Oh, but, the, but you'll never be able to get the money together. I said, for the sound system, I said, I'm not raising money for that. Well, what do you mean? What are you doing? I said, well, the pastor, the pastor, when I first got started going over, he's got 250 churches. And he goes, well, that's good, but you're going to, I said, I know, we're going to need a bigger network. But his network supernaturally grew. Now it's 500 churches, just since the last time I was there. And then he goes, what are you doing on this trip? I said, we're starting another 250 churches. Wow. On this trip. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Todd goes, well, I think you got it figured out then. <laughs> And we went over there and we, we just, it was one church after another. We just, the Lord used us in the most amazing way. Got, got that mantle. There have been so many different things. As I started to look to, to this morning, and I started to look at everything we've done since like say 2013, it's unbelievable. It is unbelievable. Like the Germany pictures came up today. And I was looking at that trip. I, I know some of you thought I wouldn't go back to Germany. I'm back in Germany now. Ready? I started with Germany and you thought, he would never get back to that story. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little short. <laughs> We're back. I'm back on point. I noticed there were all these young adult couples. No kids. Finally, I pulled it together. I prophesied over everybody in the room. God just did some awesome things. And these Russians come up to me and they said, we want to give you a gift. 
And they brought me this ring. And they put it on my finger. It was this uh, Hebrew ring. And it had something to do with kind of marriage or being spoken for. Something like that. I, I can't remember the fullness of it. Really doesn't matter. And they said, you know, thank you so much. And that's when I found out that they were a Jewish congregation. And the Lord said, David, I was waiting for this moment because I wanted to release something fresh in you. I want to release something fresh right now. And he broke this thing open in me. And it was just, all, all I can tell you is this. That night, barrenness got broken up off my life. Now you say barrenness in what area? Well, what area hasn't been producing fruit that should be producing fruit? What area is deficient where it should be more than enough? I'm telling you, I had barrenness broken off of me that evening. It was broken off of me. I could feel it. I could feel barrenness. How many would love to just feel barrenness falling on them? Yes. I'm not talking about having more kids, ladies. I'm talking barrenness, things yes. that are not producing. Right. Your well should be producing and it's not. Yes. Amen. You should be in overflow, but you're not. Right. How many want to be in overflow? Yes. When barrenness broke off me, I'll never forget as long as I live. They said, it's off you. We were having like this prayer thing at the end. I'm like, hallelujah. And I said, well, just before I leave, I want to say this. Boom! Everybody looked at me crazy. This is a Russian church, Germany. I've got interpreters. I'm like, boom! And I said, boom! I said it again. I said, there's going to be a baby. Boom! I said, You're, there's going to be so much fruit. And barrenness is breaking off. There's going to be a baby. Boom! That's, that's going to be your sign. That barrenness is breaking off and that the blessing of the Lord is being released in this place and on this place. It's going to be a boom. This is going to be a house where new birds, it's like a nursery in the spirit. I mean, that's my word, baby boom. I go back a year later. And it is crazy. There are all these nursing mothers. There are kids everywhere. I mean, there were more kids. And then, if you know anything about churches, some churches, it might not have even been kids that were there when I prophesied over the couples, but some churches were like, hey, they have kids too. And so it was a church full of young adults and kids. There were kids everywhere. And I started going there for another year or so. And after that, kids everywhere. And I was like, man, I've never seen anything like it. And the pastor is so hilarious. He's Russian. He goes, it's not very complicated. You come to church and say, baby, boom. Ever since we have babies booming. Like Arnold Schwarzenegger. That will be a boom. And it was a baby boom. And barrenness was broken off. I started thinking about all these shifts. And I said, Lord, do it again. Do it again. That you would do it again. And that there would be a sound that would be released. That would have so much authority on it. And so much power on it. That it would literally propel us into our destiny. That it would propel us into promise. Can you say hallelujah? hallelujah? It would propel us out of prison. Out of hardship. Out of bondage. Can you say hallelujah? hallelujah. Out of breakdown. Out of depression. Out of being bound up. Out of pointing the finger. Not just at others. Pointing the finger at yourself. Because of failures and Issues and problems. But I hear the Lord saying also that there's a trumpet blast that's getting you to really take inventory of where this thing really started. There are some things you pointed the finger other ways and the Lord says, I want to deal with you on that. But I'm telling you, man, it's favor. It's upgrade. 
It's another level. It's through the door, through the window, over the gate, and into the promised land. How many can say hallelujah, hallelujah. to that? I want you to lift your hands to heaven. I just want you to begin yes. to pray in the Holy Ghost. Si re shtele yanda. O rasabor karabashande. Ho zatatarine. Yera masande rabeshete ramakoriye. Into promise. Yes. Into promise. Yes. Into promise. Jovita, into promise. Corinne, into promise. Sheree, into promise. Minka, into promise. Galen, into promise. Janice, into promise. Judy, into promise. Ho, into promise. Neil, into promise. Yes. Into promise. I want you to be in to pray in the Holy Ghost. I mean, yeah. let's really rattle the cage of the Holy Ghost for the next few moments. In the yeah. promise. Not breakdown. No breakdown. No shadow of turning. No shadow of turning. No shadow. No shadow of turning. Released in the promise. Released in the promise. Released in the promise. Come up higher. Go further. Go higher. Go deeper. No more clouds. No more soupy clouds. You can't get out and make that flight. But you're going to be able to. Don't worry. No more fog. Hey! The fog's coming off. Somebody say yeah to that. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. We're going to receive an offering here. I feel like there's one or two words I still have left in my tank here. But I want to be obedient. Let's receive an offering. By the way, thank you for all the food you brought. And um, I really, really enjoy kind of fixing and getting together. I really love it when we fellowship like that. You know what's important? There are a lot of people who come to meetings like this. They know how to come to a meeting and receive a word. They, but what we feel is there's also a ministry to one another. Amen? Yeah. We minister to one another. I want to encourage you, as you're sowing seed tonight, before you sow, you need, to, you need to think about it. The seed that you sow, you're sowing for activated blessing tonight. I want you to really think about it. I want you to consider it. I want you to pray over it. You say, what are we praying over? Well, we're praying over the fact that it multiplies. We want the seed to multiply. Yes. But at the same time, what I'm believing for is that we have no more limitation. I, I feel... How many are ready for limitation to come off? Yes. Man, I tell you what, I, I, I have a lot of faith. A lot of faith. And I believe we're moving into some things. This month, especially, I'm so excited. We've got Lee Ballinger coming in. Jacqueline's going to come in and lead some worship. We're going to have a great time this in, in March. I'm excited about March. But I'm excited about what God's doing because I believe we're going to see something. I've had three guys blow my phone up this week. They're like, David, are you guys doing meetings in Lafayette? I said, no, why? He said... I just feel like it's about time for you to do meetings again and like God's going to start breathing on something. There's going to be a season where God breathes on it. There are a whole lot of people going to get set free, set on fire. I said, let it happen, Jesus. Bring it. Amen? Yeah. How many want that? Yeah. Now, I'm not talking about just for you, but I'm talking about for the area. Yeah. And I just told the Lord, I'm like, you know what? I said, I said you know, here's what I say. I, I will say this. I say this. I say... I want, what I want and what I want to see is I want to see the Lord magnified. I want to see His house full. Here's what else I want to see. I want to see the people of God ministering to the people that come in with the new harvest. Yeah. Wouldn't that be amazing if now when the harvest comes in, 
We have a bunch of people that are trained in the prophetic, that are full up in Jesus and know how to pour into these that God's sending in. Amen? Amen. And I think a lot of us know how to act on a prayer line, but a lot of us don't know how to just act in this dynamic here where we're breaking bread together. That's really important. But I tell you what, God's going to bring in a harvest, and you need to get ready for God to bring harvest in to you. That's part of it. When you sow, you need to sow believing that your harvest is coming. When Gina and I sow, we sow believing that our harvest is coming. Well, we've had seasons where we sow smaller amounts, and we've had seasons where we can sow bigger amounts. But we sow believing as if our harvest is coming. And we get out in faith, and we sow faith seed sometimes. How many have ever sowed faith seed? I mean faith seed. The other night, because I'm by myself, I went to eat. And the girl was waiting on my table. The Lord just said, it wasn't a lot. It wasn't a lot. But the Lord said, I had one little amount that was ready to go. And I heard the Lord say, you need to give more. And I didn't fight it very much. I just said, you know what? I want to be a blessing. And I heard the Lord say, and I, and I will tell you this. I was talking to another minister and we were both talking about it. He said, that's one thing that needs to return to the church. There are a lot of people. Mika, we've seen this over the years where people come to church and they pray over what their seed is even going to be. They hear from the Lord on it. And I heard the Lord say, those days are returning back to giving. Because those days brought with it supernatural windows of blessing that were opening up. We used to have so many, this is the truth. We had so many ministries that would come through here. And, the, and I shut it down for a while. For about the past six, seven months, I've shut it down. Because I've done it intentionally. I know the Lord wants me to get something established. And there's been some pouring in and some foundational things. But I'm telling you what, man. We used to have people come through here and they used to say, Man, I've never seen Holy Ghost giving like that. It's just Spirit-led giving. And it always made me feel really good when preachers would go, how many offerings can we take tonight? I'd say take four or five if you want. Take six or seven if you want. You know why? Because as long as people want to respond and give, if that's the culture, amen, if people want to get to it, let them give. How many people agree with that? Some of you are like, I don't know where he's going with this. We're not taking four or five offerings tonight. I'm just telling you, if, the, if there's an anointing on one offering or two offerings, I've seen an anointing on a third offering. I've seen, it, I've seen an anointing on a fourth or fifth offering. We have, we've had situations where the bill would not have gotten paid had not God just supernaturally done it. How many know God still moves in supernatural ways and finances? So whatever you're sowing, as soon as you get your seed ready tonight, I want you to hold it up to heaven because I want to pray over it. It's one of those kind of things. We're going to believe that it multiplies. And you say, what does it look like when it multiplies? It looks like it's multiplied. See, they Just start praying in tongues now. Just start praying in tongues over your seed. As that seed is planted, we're going to believe that the God of more than enough waters it. The God of more than enough. The God of right timing. Can you say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Yeah. Shay, just lift those hands to heaven. Let's just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. Japa reye se leyendere boje. Jama reeste genete. Zuka yeneste resto. Tare tu reeste ge. Tare tu eleste gebo. Eleste gebo. Eleste gebo. So we need to cast the bread on the water. Hey! Cast the bread. Cast your bread, Fred. Cast your bread. See, 
my tule. Shoot, that sounds French, tule. Sula, Luma. Sule. Shiriama. Gimondo. Cibrien. If I don't speak other languages, it's not because I didn't try, man. I pray in tongues. Uh, I'm saying a lot now. Praise God. Isn't that awesome? I speak more French by accident than some people do on purpose. Father, right now, we just pray that you breathe on these words. You see, when you get languages like that, it always has to do with missions, too. So, Father, we thank you for revival. We thank you for your presence being poured out and your glory being poured out around the world, all the different people groups, all the different countries where we have our missionary friends doing good work. Father, let a fire and an anointing come upon them where they're at right now. I want you also, would y'all begin to pray in the Holy Ghost right now over, uh, there's a ministry friend named Joseph. He works some with Rodney Howard Brown. He, he's, he and his wife are based out of China. I want to pray for them and their family. Yeah. A lot going on right there. And they're from the U.S., by the way. Father, right now we pray for Joseph and his wife right now. Hedge of protection in the mighty name of Jesus.
Shepotuka. Somebody need to be praying over your money. She am I. I'm telling you. I'm praying over your finances. She Tele. Whoa. She Tinga してとたしてとたしてとたしてとたとたとたとたとたとたとたとたとたとたとたとたとたとたとたとたとたとたとたとたとたとたとたとたとたとたとたとたとたとたとたとたとたとたとたとたとたとたとたとたとたとたとた
Retrieve, 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 retrieve. Retrieve, retrieve, retrieve. Money stolen from you, retrieve. Retrieve, retrieve, retrieve. Retrieve, retrieve. The Raiders. Raiders of the Lost Legacy. <laughs> hey, come on back. We declare our legacies are coming back. Our destinies are coming back. Our birthrights are coming back. Hey, Champagne, Tanda La Banda, Gemondo, Gemondo, eh, Gemondo, Yamataya, Gemontaya, Celebo. Um, I, I heard the Lord say something real quick that you were entering into the divine, and not just in this moment, as we clearly sort of saw, but you, your life, your, your ministry, and, then, and uh, entering into into the divine. Yeah. Boom. You know, and and um and I don't know exactly what it means, but I kind of have a sense uh, of understanding of why you would be. Mm -hmm. And I guess I just want to say. I'm going to come. Amen. Amen. How many want to enter into it? Enter into the divine. Enter into it. You can be a partaker in his divine nature. Amen. Yes. Just stretch to heaven right now. Yes. Hey, we would enter in. Enter in. Entering into better covenants. Entering into better agreements. Entering into things that have been forged in heaven. Entering into things that have been pinned in heaven that are now being released on earth. That have been released in heaven, released on earth, released in heaven, released on earth. Hey, they go stop taking care of business in heaven and in manifesting here. Father, we thank you that things are manifesting. Things that used to take three months happening in three days. Things that used to take three days, three hours. Things that used to take three hours, three minutes. Things that used to take three minutes, three seconds. Hey! Things that used to take three seconds, milliseconds. Hey, things that used to take milliseconds faster than the speed of light, than the speed of light, than the speed of light. How soon can you declare? I'm telling you, I want you to find three things. Think about three things that you want to declare and speak life. Right now, just start speaking life. Three things, just speak out, whether it is your kids, your finances, your car, your job, your boss, whatever. Three areas, just start speaking life to it right now. Life, 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 life. Life, 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 life. Sima tu. Sima tu ye. Hallelujah. Neil, go forth. I am going forth now. Going forth. Hey, God's good. Everybody said hallelujah. I will thank you for praying for me. My back has really been hurting. Uh, I don't know what happened last night. Really don't even know how it happened. Uh, it just started hurting me last night during the day. And I went to sleep and I thought, well, it'll be better. And then I woke up and it was still paining me. And so, but how many believe he heals bad backs? Amen? He does. Multiply, 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 multiply. He heals. He heals. And sometimes the Lord will give me something like that just so I can pray for others that are. If you have any, if you have a pain right here. Maybe you came in tonight and you just have a pain right here. Stretch toward Joe, the true to your right next to Jenny. Put your hand on her shoulder right there. You got a pain in your back. Anybody else lower back pain? Jenny, would you lay hands on Kim right there, right next to you? So just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Jete Zuta. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Zamatari, yeah. yeah. Backs being brought in the line in the mighty name of Jesus. Backs being brought in the line in the mighty name of Jesus. Anything with the spine, whether it's bone on bone or any kind of rub like that right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Anything inflamed in the nerves right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Come in the line. 
Thank you, Lord. Come thank into you, Lord. Line. Come into line. Come into line. Yes, thank you, Lord. Come into line. Mika? Uh, my granddaughter, Ashton, is about to have a baby when she gets back. And uh, she doesn't know what triggers it, but sometimes she can't even walk. Here. So right now we pray for Ashton right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. Right now. Anything having to do with the nerve or we're sitting with the nerves right now, nerve endings right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. The mighty name of Jesus. The mighty name of Jesus. I felt to pray for acid reflux. I don't know who has that. Uh, half everybody. Amen. You know? Lift your hands to heaven to deal with that. I almost said natural reflux. Reflex. Natural reflex is what I almost said, but acid reflux. Hey! And it's not just for spicy food eaters. So let me help you. Don't, don't be praying for that and then drinking a thing of wine and eating spaghetti just before you go to sleep. Oh, man. Because you're being crazy. We want to legit heal you, get you healed. Right now, acid reflux. The name of Jesus. This is what I'm seeing in the spirit. A teaspoon of honey in the spirit. So I said, what is that? He says, it's the same honey that David and Jonathan were eating. To quicken you to where you're never going to have that problem again. So, so give me a shot of that. So right now, Lord, just we want the honey. Just a tiny bit, not a whole teaspoon. Just on the edge of the teaspoon with the honey. It What it does, alkaline acidity. That's what it's called. Uh, it's causing it being too much acid. Mm -hmm. It brings you back to alkaline. Mm -hmm. And just a little bit though, you can't and you can't do it all the time. Mm -hmm. Just every now and then you get it real, real bad and mix it with honey. Isn't that interesting? I saw that in the spirit too. That's so cool because I'm supposed to bring my stepfather to the doctor for that tomorrow. Isn't that interesting? We're just going to believe right now he doesn't deal with acid reflux anymore. That that's just not going to happen anymore. So Father, right now we just ask that you would take acid reflux away from him. Never to return in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody with a blood sugar has been dipping too low. When it falls too low you have complications. Some about blood sugar too low. Some about blood sugar. You know somebody or it's you with your blood sugar? Francis. Francis. Okay, David. Okay, Francis and David. Jackie. Francis, David, Jackie. Lift your hands up. We'll pray for them. Right now, we just take authority over that right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We call those conditions into line right now for Francis, for Jackie, for David right now. And they say we have diabetes and it turns black like that. It's, it's not good at all. Right. Circulation. Right now, we just command circulation to come. Right now. Right now. Uh, it's, it's neuropathy, you see, where it's neuropathy where there's not circulation. I've seen miracles in circulation. We literally had a, years ago, my uncle's company, medical company, he built a device. God gave him the schematic for it. How many believe God can speak to you through dreams and visions? Yes. And he built a device that the FDA is still yet to approve, although they can use it now. They've actually used that same device somewhere in Karen Crow. Somebody bought one of his machines that he designed. But God gave him the design on that machine, and we used to treat diabetic patients. We had a prince from Saudi Arabia come over uh, to get treated. He was going to lose his legs. He had no feeling whatsoever in his legs, going to lose his legs. And um, my uncle prayed, and because he always believes in the power of prayer. I mean, you know, God can use medicine and He can use... Amen. He went in and did that device, and do you know that that prince, for the first time ever, his feet began to perspire, and he did not have to lose his legs. God answered his prayer. I'm telling you right now, there are a lot of significant miracles that can happen like that. And I'm just saying, what I'm starting to do is I'm saying, you know what? I'm tired of hearing about all these miracles on TV. I want to see them. I want to see them manifest. So how many believe it's a season for that? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So tonight what I want you to do is I want you to write this down real quick. 
because I'm going to give you an announcement. Tomorrow night at 7 o'clock Central Time. I am prophesying like a wild man over you, your friends. You can tell your friends to call. And I'm doing it the first time, the first couple of times, I'm just going to do it. So here's the number for you to write down. So you're going to call this number on Monday at 7 o'clock. Area code 408. 408-638-0968. And then it's going to tell you to enter an ID, uh, ID number when you call in. And this is the number you're going to enter. 2 Four nine nine one three zero three eight nine. So that's two four nine nine one three zero three eight nine. You call that number, and what it'll do is you can now if you have your uh, if you have your phone. Uh, you can also upload a link, and I'm going to send you an email for that link as well. And you could do it that way too, and you could do it. But without having to call that number, without having to call that number. So there's two ways you can do it. You can do it through the link, or you can do it through the phone call. Either way, you can dial right on and you're in. It works good because not everybody has. Uh, not everybody's good with the apps and knows how to app navigate real good. I like the phone thing because it's totally awesome. Gina tried it out. It's great. And what we do is, when I'm doing the, the broadcast, what I'll do is, there'll be times that I have everybody muted and then I can, I, I can highlight different people, prophesy, have some back and forth. And I'm going to have some special guests on the show. And uh, now tomorrow, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that it's going to be a surprise. So, but tomorrow at 7 is when we'll do our first show. And I'm really excited about it. And I'll get, I'm not even calling it a show. It's just a phone call. And I, I don't even have a name for it. I probably will. But the purpose of it is just words of life. Because I hear people all the time. They're going, man, I need a word. I didn't get one at church. That's your chance. If you didn't get a word or somebody, you know somebody, they need a word. And listen, uh, I want to just tell you something right now. Sometimes you need somebody you can count on that knows how to actually discern to give a word. And some of the things that people are getting for a word, it's not a word. And uh, I believe in the sure word of the Lord. And so, uh, tonight, tomorrow night's going to be a, a neat prophecy time. I'll for sure go for about an hour. And uh, it's really easy to log on. The minute you enter that code, you're right in the room. Okay? I'll give you more information on that, but I think that sounds totally awesome. Also, I want to say this. Jenny wrote this book. How many years ago was it, Jenny? 2016. Yeah. Yeah. 2017. It was the year. It was the year of the flood. This book is totally awesome. You know why? Because I know the person who wrote it. And you know, when Jenny first started coming to the meetings, I had several words for her. But she's one of those people who came to, to a meeting where I gave her a word about a book, and she wrote a book. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got another friend who comes to our meetings. Hey, her name is Janine Gerald. She wrote a book. Over the years, we've had people where the Lord has spoken to me and said, it's time for you. You've got something to, to share. You've got something to, uh, to give. And this is a book called Transformed Life. And it is beautiful. It is beautiful. It's very well done. And it's awesome. How many could stand for a transformed life? Amen. So I want to give this to Mama Jackie. But I want to give one to Kareem too because she was waving her hand. So Kareem, will you pass that to Mama Jackie? And then I'm going to give you yours. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I want to just tell you that I believe it's a season where things are going to start to manifest. We need to start looking 
for the manifesting goodness of God. Amen. Let's stand tonight. Can you give us the number one more time? Yeah, I can give you the number one more time. You also said you had a link to give us? Yeah, and I can give you a link, but I'll be sending that through email. Okay. It's a lot easier. But it's 408-638-0968. And then don't forget that, that ID. Let's stand. I want to, let's pray a prayer where we dismiss tonight. But please, love on one another. Don't, don't leave out of here without loving on one another and telling each other you love each other. Father, right now, we bless tonight, we bless our time together. And Lord, that we would just experience your love, that we would experience your supernatural grace, and that we would experience your overwhelming tsunami of your glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the name above all, all names. Amen. You guys are dismissed tonight.